Hello everyone. Good afternoon. This is Shani, AGM Nursing, Ishoda Hospital, Somaji Gura. So first, uh, in a patient care, it is very important thing. Do we like uh, we give medications as well as we give the counseling, we give the nursing care. Also, the nutrition is very important role. We nutrition is an important role. It plays in the. Uh, hello. Yes. Nutrition plays important role in the patient care. So we came here with interesting topic for this webinar. So nursing management of pet and pet feedings. So we have eminent speaker as well as expert panelist with us. So expert panelist, Dr. Konlakshmi Madam, our Eshwada Hospital, Zomaji Guda. She is a gastroenterologist consultant. As well as, Madam is expert in minimal access of GI surgery as well as bariatric surgeries. So, Eshwada Hospital, Soma Jigura. I also welcome for the speaker, she is Miss Pushpa, also high tech city nurse manager. She is working as a uh, nurse manager in recovery, uh, post, -oper post operative recovery. So, I welcome you, Pushpa, over to you. Very good afternoon, everyone. This is Pushpa. I'm heading. Hi, I'm heading here. Head at CT as a nurse manager. Right now, I'm taking care of post-operative unit. So before that, I would like to uh, today. I'm um, I'm uh, going to speak on nursing management of percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy and versus with percutaneous endoscopy jejunostomy. So actually why I have chosen this topic is so many tubes has been inserted into the body. So let's see what are these tubes and what are the indications with them. So we'll start with our topic. Thank you. Uh, yes. Yepeg, it's nothing but percutaneous endoscopy gastrostomy is a procedure to a place to, to place a feeding tube inserted through the wall of the abdominal, abdominal directly into the stomach. And a percutaneous endoscopy jejunostomy, a feeding tube which is inserted through the abdominal wall directly into the small intestine called jejunum. Then, then we can say that there is a Foley's catheter, nasogastric tubes, and or, these are also can be inserted into the jejunostomy and stomach. Then let's see the difference between the gastrostomy and jejunostomy. Gastrostomy is a feeding tube that is placed into the stomach. Let's see the jejunostomy tube is placed into the jejunum, which is second part of the small intestine when the tube cannot be placed into the stomach. So what are the indications for the gastrostomy tube to be inserted? The, in these conditions, let's see, stroke or other brain injury, surgery of the head and neck, upper gastrointestinal tract, neoplasm, it's nothing but uncontrolled growth of the cells, dysphagia, difficulty in swallowing, oropharyngeal and oropharyngeal problems, patient with altered mental status and in malnutrition and aspiration for the bowel decompression, et cetera. And what are the indications for the jejunostomy tube insertion? Gastric distension, delayed gastric emptying, previous gastric resection, and aspiration of gastric feedings. And let's see about the contraindications. Contraindications for the gastrostomy tube is coagulopathy, pharyngeal or esophageal obstruction, preventing endoscopy and psychosis or dementia, pulmonary or malignant cachexia is nothing but loss of body and muscle mass. Contraindications for the judgment. That's right. Yes, uh, coagulopathy, small bowel obstruction, intra perforation, severe cachexia. And how the medical management can be done through the help of the acepto syringe to gastrostomy and jejunostomy. In the, we can see at the arrow of the first, use of this syringe is nothing but acepto syringe. This syringe will be to be fixed to the port of the gastrostomy or jejunostomy and should be cleaned thoroughly before that we have to attach tightly. Then for the medication, for the medication purpose, we have to crush the tablets fine into the fine powder and administer and do not inject with the force. And this can be helpful for the self-feeding also. Escalation parameters to the doctors and in charge nurse, if is there any. There is a signs of infections 
like redness swelling pus around the tube and we can see the fever also like mostly 100 for 100 foreign pain at the site of severe abdominal pain trouble, trouble dislodgement in the tube flushing bleeding and perforation and we can see leakage around incision site that soaks five or more gauze pads per day there will be a chest pain shortness of breath foul smelling coming from the stoma so pushpa my question to konlakshmi madam dr konlakshmi madam so what trouble uh, due to an emergency out? case ma'am is a little late okay uh, so pushpa what troubleshoot points do we remember as a nurse while handling of feeds as you have put up in the nursing care of the patient pushpa yes. nursing care of the patient yes, yes, yes. ma'am so you can I, continue yeah there are our nursing care of ma the management of the patient with gastrostomy and jejunostomy tubes these are hand washing is very crucial before and after yes hand washing will help us to get the less infection and the patient can take bath the very next day if she or he is very okay while providing sponge bath the plaster gums any stickers to be cleaned with alcohol and sto stoma area to be kept clean and where also sterile technique is in cleaning the site using sterile gloves, gauze, and normal saline until the area has been healed. Ensure that patient uh, cleaning is done from the central to periphery to prevent the spread of infunction. So, uh, let's understand. Pushpa, continue. Yeah, sorry. Push the tube gently. If loosened at the at least three to four. When we try to the fix the tube, so we have to fix the tube to three to four centimeters into the abdomen until resistance it felt and inform the doctor. Then the next, secure the site properly. Reassess often and hand over with care. Every time when we are going to use the uh, tube, we need to do the flushing protocol with normal saline is must. Provide patient education on how to clean the stoma site, especially since the tube will be inserted for the long term as post-discharge plan. Involving the patient and family members, that is very important because the patient will go the, with, with the tube during feedings and allowing them to demonstrate back that will be very helpful for the patient to get in touch. And let's go for the conclusion about the gastrostomy versus uh, jejunostomy represents an effective, minimally invasive and cost-effective method for gastrointestinal decompression in patients with advanced incurable cancer. Proper nursing care and right observation is the best key for the safety of the patients. Yeah. Thank you, Pushpa, for a very, a very well explanation you have given uh, in the presentation. So I would like to emphasize on the infection, which you have already uh, you know, mentioned in your presentation. The infection is an important aspect. We have to be, as a nurses, we have to be more careful while handling uh, tubes, especially while feeding the tubes while administrating of the, uh, uh, you know, feeds and all. So what, as a healthcare nurses, like we have to give education to the even patients, like, you know, while going, while hand, uh, at their, uh, when patients are there in the hospital, we have to educate the relatives how to handling the feeds and the, how to handle the tubes and in terms of prevention of infection. As you mentioned in the presentation, like uh, hand hygiene is a, crucial important point you know you have like we all have to remember while handling the tubes to prevent such kind of infections like uh, um, you port infections can happen also this uh, tubes can lead uh, you know at the end of uh, it can be removed so this is long-term feeds long-term uh, uh, whatever uh, tubes we have kept for the life-saving for nourishing of the patient's uh, improvement and growth and development so as a nurses we all should remember we have to do the hand hygiene also. We have to emphasize on the dressing properly. 
Securing the tube sometimes it it may happen. Disconnecting tubes sometimes while changing a gown or while doing the position changing. This all can be remembered by the concerned nurse as well as we have to educate the relatives. So while uh, you know while going to the uh, discharge part, when we remember the attenders as well as the patients will have so much uh, so many doubts and so many queries in their mind. So consultant will explain, but still as a nurse, we have to play an important role to explain, to prevent infections, what all they have to follow and how they have to handle the tubes and the feedings at the home, how they have to do the dressing. And there is a stigma in uh, patient's uh, health, uh, patient's mind, as well as the attenders also. Yeah, I have tube, so I should not uh, take a bath. So it is nothing like that. The experts as well as the consultant surgeons, they were saying absolutely they can go with the bath uh, with the waterproof dressing. So those doubts can be cleared by the nurses. So like uh, uh, our expert panelist, uh, Madam, uh, went to emergency. If you have any questions, please drop into a, a chat box. We will definitely answer you. Yeah, madam, I welcome madam to the webinar. Konlakshmi, madam, we have few uh, queries, ma'am. What complications can happen while handling this uh, tubes and uh, feedings at home, especially for the attenders and the patients? They have the lot of fear and the stigma, how they have to take care. And the readmissions also can happen sometimes. So if they are not, if any breach of these tubes have taken care at home, ma'am. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah, tell me first, uh, thank you for this opportunity and uh, hello to all the nurses who are uh, viewing this program. See, feeding nutrition is a very important part of medical care and uh, especially for people who are, are not, unfortunate not to be able to take their feeds through mouth, which is a natural way and then we are putting some tube to feed them. Uh, what are the common things what we see? When we send a patient home with a feeding tube, is first is the attendants are not properly counseled regarding how to, what type of feed to be given, and what to do after giving a feed. See, most of them, what happens is these are usually very sick patients or bed bound patients. Even the family is in a sort of depressed and frustrated mood. So they also, it is not, in the, when, when they're in a hospital, they understand that uh, the doctors and nurses take care and most of the attendants are just sitting, they're not doing anything. When they go home, the whole work falls on them. Then the frustration comes out. So they may just push some feed, uh, thick feed, and they will not slush the tube. They'll come with, first thing is they'll come with block tubes. And then... Most of the time, the Indian psyche is, if you are a patient, first thing is avoid taking a bath. Yes. So how many times we tell a surgical patient, take bath, they usually come after elective surgery or some weeks without taking bath with very dirty abdomen. So same thing with these tubes, what happens is there's a collection of uh, full length material around these uh, tubes. That is what we see. Sometimes the granulation tissue forms and the tube rubs on it. There may be a little bleeding. The family may panic because of that. Yes. And, or sometimes the tube has slipped off. This happens, this tube slipping off usually happens if the tube has not been fixed properly. Yes. Or in long run, no one has bothered to see whether the uh, suture which has uh, been holding on the tube is uh, secure. Or sometimes you have to take, when the patient comes for a checkup, Fix the tubes again. That is important. So whenever the nurse uh, is removing the dressing around the uh, wound, they see that the suture is loose. They should immediately alarm. They should call the consultant and say that see your patient has come and the tube is looking loose. Please come and fix it. It is not that okay, patient has come. I put one dressing and then or on the dressing only they'll put some more pads and fix it off. That is what we have seen. Yes, but no one is removing the primary dressing you've seen. So, uh, block tubes, we should mandatorily tell the family, whoever is taking charge of feeding the patient. But sometimes patients also are uh, capable of feeding themselves, specifically those who have some esophageal stricture or something. But otherwise, they're walking, talking patients. They can feed themselves. They need not depend on someone. Always tell 
flush some water, the drinking water, what you're taking. After the feed, uh, please flush some water through the tube so that the tube doesn't get blocked with the uh, particulate matter, mainly from the dal or vegetable. They can just block off the tube. Or we also um, suggest to use a little uh, bubbly fluid like uh, soda or Sprite, little lemon only. Maybe once in a day, we can tell them to flush the tube with this bubbly fluid. So that will clear any small blockages from happening. And specifically where uh, people have not used the specified peg tube or the PEJ tubes and used indigenized like a Foley's or a Riles tube. Mainly with Foley's we have seen that the feed, even in the hospital or sometimes at home, the feed is accidentally given into the balloon. Oh, it's so a the patient will suddenly come to you with vomiting and then you're puzzled what happened, that why patient is come presenting with features of intestinal obstruction. So uh, when we have done CT and all, we find that the balloon is hugely dilated. When you aspirate, so much feed comes out of it. So the... Balloon, uh, the tube which is meant to distend the balloon should be actually tied off, should be folded and tied off with a tight string so that by no accident uh, the feed goes into this uh, balloon. These are real things which have happened. Hmm. And then, uh, if the patients are far away and the attendants are not bothered with the word, sometimes they can come back with a slip tube. So when the slip tube and the patient comes quickly, maybe within a few hours, even a one day, we can again take them to the radiology and dilate the tract and reinsert the tube. Okay. So that our intervention radiologists can do it very easily. There's nothing to panic in that. And uh, then giving lot of protein containing fluid at one go into the uh, tube can cause diarrhea. So we have to tell the family, um, the nutrition department has to sit, take at least two, three days with the family, not at just at the time of discharge that you hurriedly explain something and send them off is not correct. Uh, that uh, how to make a healthy feed without contaminating because the most common problem what happens in the intestinal tract is hyperosmolar fluid going into the intestine will early cause diarrhea and make them all malnourished and dehydrated. Okay, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable explanation. Ma'am, we have a few more questions. I'll just, I wanted to request you to uh, answer, ma'am. So what warning signs can, you know, need to be given to the doctor while rounds, especially, yes, one, two, three, four warning signs. Of, it has encounter with the patients. So it, ha it will help in easy diagnosing and treatment, uh, treating the patients for the surgeon. Yeah, sometimes what we see is the feed is not going. See, suddenly the tube will never get blocked. Yes. The common thing what we see. That, and mm, the nurse feels the tube is, the feed is not going well. She gives some amount of feed and just leaves the feed bag hanging there. And uh, they should immediately call the doctor and tell that I feel that the feed is not going in easy. And yesterday it went well, today it is not. Like how you say my IV cannula got blocked. It's mm -hmm. same, same concept only. Yes, ma'am. Not that end of the day you are seeing that, oh, why the feed is hanging there? No, it is not going there. It should not be there. You should immediately call the doctor. Maybe if we flush it at that time, it will easily open up. And then suppose you have left the feed like that. Sometimes uh, feeds are put to the syringe pumps when you want to trickle feeds. If the tube is blocked, the feed is left in the syringe pump and then you flush it. And then again, that old feed is just pumped off into the patient. So whenever a feed is left unused for some time, first discard it and call the team doctors and tell that, look, the patient has not... Uh, been able to take, get this feed, I feel something is wrong. See, we entirely depend on the nursing team to take care of our patients. Because the doctor cannot be there 24 hours with the patient. These are the nurses who are actually the primary caregivers. And whatever feedback you give us, we can act immediately. 
not that you just hand over to the next duty sister and then you walk away that next duty sister will wait till we come for round so in the meantime patient is deprived of the nutrition or sometimes dehydrated so that is very important that you should be very alert there are few alarm like when you see low blood pressure you call us when you see high heart rate you call us and the patient even if the patient is eating by mouth but you find that you have given a tray of food to the patient and patient has eaten one spoonful of food and discarded of the whole food find out what is happening not liking the food or vomiting because of the thing and immediately call what happens is when the feed is uh, comes to the patient the sister just enters it into the chart thing feed given mm. but when we take actual recall sometimes we find that the patient is getting less than all of the so this thing has to be uh, educated to all the nurses and make sure that nutri intake output should be properly charted and adequate patient has taken one spoon of rice right only one spoon don't write patient has taken meal one spoon of rice is not meal so yes. that is very important yes ma'am um it's really uh, very important for the nurse to calculate and you know to watch out these warning signs and to be intimated uh, timely for the consultant ma'am as you said uh, truly ma'am one more uh, query ma'am like this kind of patients and relatives they will not be mentally uh, prepared for this uh, you know peg and patch uh, uh, tube insertions so how do you counsel as a nurse uh, the what is the important role to counsel the patients and the attenders also go forward uh, for the this kind of feeds and all man see first thing falling sick and uh, is the worst thing and lot of time the so called family support fades uh, off over time so if it is a intelligent patient i would say train the patient right from day one when you are giving the feeds you make the patient feel active part of the treatment most of the times we only dump the patient on the bed and uh, they are not explained anything everything is told to the attendant who may not do it properly so patient is a alert patient i would prefer teach them that listen you i am giving you the feed learn to take it yourself okay yes and uh, and also if the attendant uh, are serious about uh, taking care of the patient from day one make learn teach them go and wash your hands and come we'll give the feed so they should not think that it is only the nurse's duty to feed and bathe the patient and then they take home when they take home the patient they are not able to do it that is why we get neglected patients coming back because attendants all the time they are only ordering the nurses or uh, seeing uh, supervising them that is not correct if attendant is there attendant should be made part and parcel of the treatment given then you see i am saying this not only for this tube management but in general nursing care you make the patient attendant a part of the treatment care the results will be better when they go home the patient gets a better deal yes ma'am as uh, thank you ma'am for your valuable explanation for the all three questions very patiently you have answered ma'am the last uh, one more question we have ma'am the follow up like after the discharge of the patient uh, what would be the follow up like uh, while discharge most of the times nurse and pre will be dealing or uh, the consultant will explain and uh, but they have many queries when do the follow up like the how they have to come for the follow up for any time any warning signs when they face at the home they have to come uh, how do you guide ma'am see i would say that one thing is patient will have patient attendants will have all sorts of queries when just before the patient is getting discharged i would say a intelligent day nurse or the night nurse what she should say is that today you are ready for discharge the doctor will come for rounds if you have queries jot them on a paper and discuss it i would say that this would be very helpful for all the patients in the ward if the night nurse protocol is that do you have huh? any the doctor will clear you let it not all fall on the nurse and the peer because by the time the actual discharge is happening patients are only concerned about bill they don't care about anything they're busy can i speak of money from here or there they're busy in that so and then they keep asking when they're going 
to some more uh, ayah or someone, some nurse who is in the ward who may not be concerned with them, they'll just show this paper, can I take this medicine? What will the poor lady do? So I don't, I can't blame the nurses for anything, but we have to be very smart. And you tell them that today you're going to get discharged. If you have any queries, then the doctor comes for rounds in the morning, please be ready. And then we should tell them that, okay, the tube is blocked. Mainly we're talking of peg feeding and all that. Tube is blocked or there's any uh, patient is having fever or diarrhea. Please get to the hospital or at least give them a contact number that you have to. Most of our departments, we give a number, helpline number, that please call on this number and let us know what is happening. Because formal uh, visit will be after two weeks or three weeks. But a lot of people will keep the patient like that till the two weeks and then come. So we should give them the alarming signs. Mainly it is tube block which they come with or uh, diarrhea. That is what happens because when one is contaminated food, a lot of them don't do practice hand hygiene or then they need discharge around the tube. They should inform us. In people with long standing tubes, the tubes coming up and all are a common thing which can be handled. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, so for this uh, today's webinar, we have been learned a lot of things uh, from the expert panelist, uh, our uh, Dr. Kunlakshmi, madam. Uh, so clearly she has been cleared our doubts as a nurse, like what, what is our role to handle the, uh, you know, feeds, uh, especially when they are going at home and all. Uh, they should not uh, many many times many a times we have seen readmissions are being happened with this tube, tube blockage as well as the with the infections so that uh, like we have to be more uh, smart to handle this kind of patients and uh, prevention of readmissions can be uh, done by end of us like uh, thank you ma'am thank you konlakshmi ma'am for uh, uh, coming us and you know in spite of busy schedule you have come here ma'am thank you so much once again and thank you, Ms. Uh, Pushpa from High Tech City Hospital. Very well, uh, indications, in, uh, contraindications, everything being explained by her. Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity, uh, especially Shanti, ma'am. Uh, thank you, everyone. So stay tuned uh, for next webinar on every Thursday uh, at 3 o'clock. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am.